So maybe jumping into your ideas, a good place to start would be with the current prevailing paradigm of materialism, just so everyone's up to speed on physicalism, materialism, uh, whatever which your, your preferred term is. Uh, if we can outline what that is and, and go from there. Yeah, you, you could call it mainstream uh, metaphysical physicalism. That would be the, the official uh, uh, unambiguous name. We can call it materialism so long as we don't mix it up with the, the material girls uh, materialism, ethical materialism. We are talking about metaphysical materialism here. Uh, it's, the, it's the idea that uh, what really exists out there is unconscious matter, fundamentally unconscious, and certain arrangements of that matter somehow, in a way that nobody understands, uh, uh, give rise to consciousness as an epiphenomenon or as, a, as an ephemeral property. Um, but consciousness is not fundamental. It's derivative, according to materialism. In essence, what materialists do, they start like all of us from perception, and perception is mental. Um, and then they describe that perception, those perceptions, with certain quantities. Perceptions are qualitative. We perceive qualities. We describe those qualities with quantities, such as amplitude, frequency, mass, charge, momentum, spin, and so on and so forth. Having described that, materialists then say, but all that exists is actually the description. All that exists is the mass, charge, momentum, and the qualities, they are epiphenomenal. They are derivative from the quantities. So they invert it. They say what exists are quantities and qualities are derivative, even though you know, we start all from the qualities and the quantities are, quantities are just descriptions. Yeah, I think there's a, um, there's a kind of range of, of, uh, of more or less sensible opinions I think you can take on materialism, right? There's all the way from the kind of naive, the world is made of, of hard stuff, and I think you and I would agree that's uh, that's not what's going on. And um, and I think something I know you, we've both written about is that that science is in the business of describing processes and describing the behaviour. It, science itself, the scientific worldview, does not say what this stuff is in its essence, right? That is correct. Uh, the, the scientific method is a way to investigate how nature's behave. That's what uh, experiments uncover. You set up some initial conditions and then you observe how nature will react to that. That reaction is a behavior. So all scientific models are predictive models of what nature would do next, given certain initial conditions. They, they have nothing to say about what nature essentially is. Uh, that is beyond the scope of the scientific method because experiment can't pin that question of being uh, down. It can inform that question, but it cannot pin it down. Uh, um, the question of what nature is, is a question of philosophy. And philosophy is helped by, by science, it's informed by science, but you need more to, to, to converge to a reasonable hypothesis for what the nature of reality is. You need um, parsimony, you need logical consistency, coherent empirical adequacy. Uh, so there's a host, no, there's a whole lot, a, a number of other things that you need to, to address metaphysics that uh, go beyond uh, the boundaries of the scientific method. Yeah, I think, I think this might be where our perspectives, where we're coming at it from slightly different places, as you're coming at it from this very serious philosophical, kind of ontological, what is the world made of perspective. And um, I always like to be reminded as a scientist to be humble and that the job of science really is this process of coming up with a map, describing how things unfold, uh, coming up with laws, you know, that's the, um, the and, and that map never fully encompasses the territory. It never explains away existence. Um, so I, I um, personally, yes, to kind of tr try to stay away from making hard claims around, um, around ontology. Um, yeah, which is a great time of year. You are a true scientist. Uh, uh, people who are <laughs> real scientists uh, understand this. And that's how they, they go about their work, because science is entirely metaphysical agno metaphysically agnostic. Um, you do not okay. need to espouse any metaphysics to do good science. Actually, it is preferable <laughs> that you don't, because if you espouse a metaphysics, uh, chances are you will be unconsciously biased. Well, I, I don't like the word unconsciously, because I don't think it doesn't exist. <laughs> but you will be inadvertently biased. Um, uh, the people that you see most often on television preaching uh, the gospel of uh, scientific materialism as a metaphysics, um, if you look carefully, most of them are not really uh, practicing scientists. Um, they have a degree, uh, but they spend their time and they earn their living 
talking about things, um, being visible. And, and I think they do a, a disservice um, to philosophy, certainly, because they babble garbage uh, uh, um, when they talk about philosophy, uh, but also a great disservice to science, because if they get discredited, um, that may rub off on science, which is would be very unfortunate. Yeah, I do. I think you're right that that we live in a culture that um, has has kind of valorized science to a point. I think because science is so tied, so tied up with engineering and, and material production of, and material production um, and the generation of kind of material wealth. I think you're right that that it culturally oversteps its mark, and we get people saying making claims about. Met like me making metaphysical claims based on this powerful method. And um, yeah, it definitely means that I think in um, a lot of people get turned off of science when I personally don't feel they should be, because I think it's a wonderful tool in its place, not as, a, as an entire worldview. Science is in my DNA. Since I can remember existing, uh, my fascination for science has been there. My, my biggest dream when I was, I don't know, a five-year-old kid, uh, maybe seven, I don't know. I, my biggest dream was to one day work either uh, for NASA or for CERN in Switzerland. So that was in the early 80s. People were still building the LEP, the older accelerator. I know it was big news at the time. Um, and uh, working for CERN was my very first job. I defended my graduation thesis on a, a Friday. On a Sunday, I was in a plane. On Monday, I started at CERN. So yeah, my love affair with science has been, it, it's lifelong. Um, I, I hope nobody misunderstands me uh, in the sense of thinking that I am shooting at science. I'm not. I am shooting often at uh, some self-appointed spokespeople of science who actually are not really talking only science. They are talking philosophy, very, very, very bad philosophy. And, and I think those people should be... Um, how to say, exposed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also think something that's really interesting in when you when you dive into your work is is the way that it comes, once you get into it and you understand what you're saying, science still stands. You know, the it's not like, I think the first time you hear, if someone says there's only consciousness, with, you know, without going any further, you might think, okay, everything's a dream. It's some kind of, it's like in a dream, if something seems to have, be lawful, it's not really, it's just an ima imaginative uh, kind of trick. Um, but yeah, it's nice that you, you come around to bringing us back to where we kind of started and thinking like, like the laws of physics look by and oh, yeah. Um, I, I recognize what you're saying because I've, I've lived through this. Uh, when I say, uh, well, my metaphysical position is that everything is mental. People think, oh, you think that everything is in your head. No, 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 that's materialism. Materialism says that the whole world of your experience is inside your skull. It's inside your head. And what is out there is purely abstract, only describable through equations. So I'm saying the, the, the exact opposite. I'm saying that the world of qualities that seems to surround us really does surround us. It's not inside our heads. It's really out there. That's, that's the metaphysical position of saying that uh, reality is mental, in essence. Um, just to, to be absolutely clear, to put it on the record, I, I don't repeat this often enough because for me it's self-evident. So I just does, don't come to, to remember that I should say this. Um, my position does not invalidate anything in the science, not one iota. Um, on the contrary, um, I, I base my work on a lot of science, a lot of uh, uh, physics, a lot of neuroscience. If you look at my writings, uh, my, my list of citations and references for scientific papers is, is rather extensive. So no, I'm not anti-science at all, and I'm very much to the contrary. Great. Um, so maybe a good thing uh, before uh, I get overexcited and just jump into uh, presuming everyone knows <laughs> about your perspective, let's go kind of step by step and um, maybe start with your thoughts on the hard problem of consciousness, if that's where you perceive your, your thinking on this stuff to have begun. Yeah, if I may just add to, to something I just tried to answer before, uh, um, James, I'm, in fact, I am a reductionist naturalist. <laughs> so I'm even more than uh, pro-science. I'm, I'm, I'm very much a reductionist. I want to reduce everything to one. 
I just choose my reduction base differently than many other people. But I'm a reductionist and I'm a naturalist. I think what's happening out there is nature doing what nature does. It's not necessarily the outcome of a premeditated plan by some universal mind that knows what it's doing. I don't think that is the case. I am with Schopenhauer there. Uh, yes, the world out there is mental, it's the will, but the will is blind. In other words, the will is instinctive, it is predictable. That's why predictive models in science work, uh, because the behavior of nature seems to be instinctive. It doesn't have the idiosyncrasies of a, a metacognitive conscious being that plans and premeditates. That's not, that doesn't seem to be what's going on. 